Hello, welcome to the Friday, October 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Chicago, Illinois. Today on ISC, Rob continued an earlier entry about mining OUIs. OUIs, these organizational unit identifiers, the first three bytes of the MAC address that typically identify the manufacturer of a particular network card or device. He explains how to use PowerShell and SNMP to actually get a list of OUIs in your network and look for outliers. Kind of interesting, his use case here, the network that he looked at, they recently did migrate from one voice over IP device to another manufacturer's devices. So with this script, he was pretty quick in identifying a device that was sort of left behind from the prior manufacturer. Of course, this can also be used to identify rogues connected to your network. There have been some interesting stories recently, for example, about Raspberry Pis and the like being found connected to networks that weren't supposed to be there. And if you are using a Mac, you may be familiar with iTerm2, a very popular terminal replacement for the Mac. Well, today a new release came out for iTerm2, fixing a critical vulnerability. Based on the flaw in the Tmux integration of iTerm2, it is possible to execute at least some commands within iTerm if a user, for example, looks at a malicious file. So the victim here would have to do nothing else probably than to use cat to look at a file and that in turn would execute commands within iTerm if certain characters are encountered in the file. This vulnerability was found as part of Mozilla's open source support program, which asked radically open security, a third party security business to do a security audit of iTerm2. Apparently this vulnerability existed in iTerm2 for about seven years. Well, and the next story also affects Apple, but actually Apple software running on Windows. This is a blog post by MorpheSec that took into the active exploitation of an unpatched vulnerability in the Apple software updater that's distributed with iTunes for Windows. This particular software suffers from an unquoted path vulnerability where essentially a file name being passed to the software isn't accurately enclosed in quotes, which does allow an attacker to use this software to execute additional code. Now, this is nothing that's sort of directly exploited over the network where you click on the link or such, but it does allow an attacker to use this whitelisted software to actually execute malicious code and evade detection this way. So while the end effect is code execution, really what this amounts to is more sort of a security feature bypass vulnerability, not uh, really technically speaking an arbitrary code execution or privilege escalation vulnerability. But according to MorpheSec, this vulnerability is actively being exploited in some targeted attacks also to deploy ransomware. Morphysec does call this particular campaign BitPamer or iEncrypt and has seen it in August of 2019. And Morphysec has now released these details after Apple has released an update for iCloud for Windows and related components earlier this week. And over the last couple of days, a number of government agencies in the UK and uh, I think today or yesterday also here in the US have warned about a number of vulnerabilities in popular VPN products. This affects Pulse Secure, Fortinet and Palo Alto VPNs. The vulnerabilities themselves 
aren't new and I have covered them in the past when they were first released, but apparently there is still a lack of awareness of these vulnerabilities and these vulnerabilities are now actively exploited. For Pulse Connect, there are two vulnerabilities. One allows arbitrary file reading, pre-authentication. The second one does allow post-authentication command injection, but of course, by first reading files with credentials, pre-authentication, an attacker may be able to authenticate. For Fortinet, it's also a pre-authentication arbitrary file reading vulnerability and then also a vulnerability that allows an unauthenticated attacker to change the password for an SSL VPN portal user. And for Palo Alto, it's a remote code execution vulnerability in the Global Protect Portal or Global Protect Gateway interface that can be exploited without authentication. So critical vulnerabilities, make sure your VPN software is up to date. That's again, one of those things that's easily missed. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.